217. Nice run there for the team. 5, 8, 4, 9, 217. 257 to the 330. Quincy numbers 13. Stephen Ketch will stand on his early at 5 8 with a 4. He'll stay on 11. But 257-2 to 330 for Espen, 380 with a 7, 199 to the 8th mile, then 584 clicking it early. I started announcing in 1973 at Orange County International Raceway. The guy who started me is here today, Dave Wallace. We worked together there. I worked time slips and stuff like that. And Dave, funny, this is true. Dave had to go use the bathroom. And he said, hey, would you fill in for me? And I said, I guess. And uh, so that's when I started. That's how you got started. I always wanted to race. I always wanted to be a racer. I raced a lot of different cars. But the problem was is... I was also announcing. I would go to the races, I would announce, and then the next weekend I'd go to the races and I'd race and I just kind of like, you know, this announcing deal is a lot of fun. I really enjoy it. It's a great time. I get to meet a lot of people. I get interviewed by you, Billy. So that's like, you know, that's like top of the I food know chain. About that, man. <laughs> you know what? What makes? I was going to ask you too, man. What makes a great announcer? I mean, what what is it? That, what is it about the chemistry between some announcers and the fans that have that connection? I love, I, honestly, not, I don't want to make this sound bad, but I just love to go out and mingle with the fans. I think it's a lot of fun. Donnie now go out sometimes and throw t-shirts and have some fun with the fans and play games. But I'm, I like the history of the sport. Like I say, I, I've been around it a long time. I came here for the first time in my teens in 1965. Wow. And it's just something that I've always enjoyed over the years and stuff. And just getting to be announced, be part of the NHRA tour for a number of years before I decided to stay home. I consider myself, I've just been very, very blessed in life. Yeah, one of the things I get impressed with too is that you know the some of the drivers like what's going on behind the camp. Like you, you'll inform the fans like it's this little background stuff, but it means a lot when you're actually watching the show. It adds to it. I I always like I'm not with you. I'll go out in the pits right now. Donnie Couch, my cohort, and I will go out and walk around. We'll get just see what's going on. Hey, what happened that run? What went wrong there? Uh, what are you going to make any changes? What do you think about for the funny car guys this afternoon? What do you think about first round for the top fuel guys? Hey, you got another qualifying session this afternoon. Fuel alters are coming up, and for me. I get to do the sports, the sportsman racers here too, and I really enjoy that. Yeah, it's great to get up there, do top fuel, to do funny car, but I really love the sportsman racers. And when Mike Ames and Steve LaBarber tell me, hey, you want to do C gas or you want to do D gas, I jump at the opportunity yeah, to get it. Cool. It's just a lot of fun. Yeah. You know, the thing is, drag racing is a fast sport. I mean, this happens in, you know, within seven seconds, all the data's in, and you're reeling it off. Like there's a lot of data that you're giving everybody, you know, within five seconds of what just happened. A lot of numbers, a lot of indexes and everything. Well, it's all part of the sport. Myself, I always tell new guys, don't look at the computer screen. Look up on the scoreboard, watch the track. Once I always look and when I see the parachutes, yeah. that tells me I can look away and go back to the computer screen and see the incremental numbers and give those, because that's a lot of fun. And I'll tell you something, when Brad Thompson made that test in tune 577 on Thursday, yeah. his 330 time was 500 quicker than the quickest all-time run at 553. So that car was on one heck of a pass. And I told Brad this morning, I said, I, I was talking about that I was just so overwhelmed with that run. I said, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to jinx you, but at least in Q3 there, he made a good pass and got in the field. Right, and not only that, but you know, when you're looking here and you're looking at the end of the, you know, the strip, that's a, that's a ways away. And a lot of times you can, you can translate data of what just happened, like, you know, wheel spinning, pistons letting go, all that stuff. You know, and from here, that's a long way to, you know, communicate what's going on. Well, you look at the cars when they leave, we'll look at their 60 foot numbers on the screens there. And you know, these guys should be sub one second in 60 foot time or right around one zero zero one zero one. You see a guy, you kind of glance over, look real quick and it's like a 103 or 104. You know it was a little soft. It's a 330 cone, the first orange cone on the track there. They, if they're on a good pass, they'll be sub 250. Right. Brad Thompson was 242 yeah. when he went that early shutoff, 577. Right, man, amazing. I got one more question for you. Man. Sure. How, how long are you gonna do this? How long do you see yourself doing this? 
Oh, I don't know. I'm having a good time. I have a wonderful girlfriend. We're going to get married this year after eight years. Three great daughters, so I got no complaints. I'll keep doing it as long. As long as the Bowsers are happy, I'll keep doing it. Very good. So I'm probably done today. <laughs> Very good. Thank you for that interview. The legendary Mike English here at uh, March Meet at Famosa. Billy, thank you very much, my friend. Appreciate it. We're 584, only 217. Nice run there for the team. 584, 92.